Well, some great points from uh, the government colleagues that they've just highlighted. Um, taking first uh, your thought about return on investment, although we're very early and our, some of the greatest gains the government will see will come from the long-term uh, measurement of outcomes mm -hmm. in the uh, metrics my colleague from the Department of Army mentioned, but I'm very pleased to tell you that, uh, building on the comments of Rod and, and Bill Lay, that we found in civilian government when we worked uh, together that uh, uh, concentrated on design once and use many, that uh, we experienced due to the uh, heavy competition on the continuous monitoring as a service contract, that there was $26 million of budget avoidance on the first uh, $60 million order that right. we uh, occurred during uh, January. And that budget avoidance of $26 million, uh, from the best we can determine, will pay much of the expenses for the entire continuous diagnostics and mitigation wow, program uh, in the uh, first years. And uh, as we're about to begin a much larger purchase of sensors and services under the mm -hmm. uh, mechanisms of uh, joint competition, in our partnership with uh, GSA FedSim, uh, I think that those uh, savings will uh, continue to mount. So we get a benefit by working uh, together at the front end with acquisition, but uh, we uh, taking the thought of collaboration to the next level. Uh, over the years in conflict, there have been some extraordinary mistakes using techniques like the Maginot line in uh, World War I, or the phalanx, if you go back to right. classical times, where uh, adversaries will run around the end of uh, uh, layered uh, defenses and cause enormous trouble uh, uh, getting into the uh, most sensitive areas where the government systems are managing. So our conclusion is that we can't have any key, uh, screen doors for the uh, nation state adversaries to kick through. We need to have a broad uh, and involved uh, support, and that's why the Diagnostics and Mitigation Program and earlier work at the uh, Defense Department on the host-based security system saw to it that no organization was left behind on basic security. So our phase one that'll go into competition the next uh, 20 weeks, as I mentioned, is going to provide hardware asset management, software asset management, and basic whitelisting vulnerability management, and configuration setting management tools uh, to everyone in .gov. And uh, I'm pleased to tell you that that same basic tool set is going to be available to the 50 state governments, local governments, territory, and tribal oh, wow. uh, activities under the cooperative purchasing program. So I think this is one of the uh, cases where uh, the government, uh, both military and civilian, saw to it that uh, many good things were gonna come from working together. Okay. And uh, that has been noticed by Congress in a way that they've offered uh, uh, New START uh, anomaly authority. Uh, we were mm -hmm. able to execute during FY 2013, even in the midst of a continuing resolution. So here's a case that not only the executive branch, but also the legislative branch has been uh, very supportive in getting those basic tool sets out to the government sector. So we have a good foundation. Uh, I think what we really have to watch for is that deploying these sensors by itself is not enough. Right. We have to get those sensors in place and begin acting on the known vulnerabilities. And from that, we'll get those uh, positive uh, measured outcomes that uh, the Army is aspiring toward. Right.